Hello guys, welcome back to my How to Play Age of Wonders 3 video series. As you can see, we are back in the map setup screen. Uh, I had it set on classic turns. So we are resetting it back to simultaneous turns. Another change is I'm going to turn off City Founding. It's an interesting option that you don't get to see played very often. Okay, so let's see how our new map is going to look. Uh, Shiga Flame Spin. Let's go. Let's go. These boats down here, uh, I don't think they were originally on this image when it was first released a couple of months ago. Um, and those boats are now buildable in game, which is pretty cool. Ooh, we started underground this time. Okay, so basically, I'm going to be talking about all the different things you see on this screen and then we will move on in a different video. Uh, we'll start off in the top left. This is the overview panel. Here you can see all the different things related to the game, related to your empire, things like that. So these are the quests. You start off with these. Um, this one is on all maps. So to win the scenario, you defeat your opponents and capture a throne city. Any random map will have this because you don't have any built-in quests, no, uh, you know, research the ultimate spell to win the game. Um, playing an allied game, so we can win with our with our allies, uh, still allied to us, we don't have to defeat them to win. And the lose condition, if we die, we come back in three turns, but if we die and lose our throne city, then we lose the scenario. So there are the quests, you can also sort them by turns. And the quest icons, this is victory requirements. Um, independent cities will give us a different quest icon. Uh, it looks slightly different, but it's sort of negligible, really. These are our cities. Nux Brom, this little throne icon indicates that it's our capital. We are a Draconian, it's an outpost. This is our morale, this is what we are building. If you pan away, click the icon, it will bring you back. It'll also open up your uh, the middle part of the building selection. This way you can see the full build queue. Show production, we'll bring that back up. Okay, we'll do resources now. So you can see here, you can also sort by them. Select the city, so you've got your gold first, mana second, then have population growth. Then you have your uh, industry, and then finally research. Uh, we have no knowledge income at the moment. Here you have a list of all your armies. So you've got current and maximum move points. You This wee tent icon indicates whether the uh, unit is camping or not. When it's selected, it turns gold. Uh, a unit that has this selected will be removed from the pending army list. You'll get a pop-up whether you want to do an action within that turn or any turn until you turn it off again. This is the leaders tab. This will display all leaders and heroes that are owned by you. You can see the name of the character. Might so over get a little pop-up. And again, uh, it'll bring you back to the character and select the army. Active spells. If we were to turn on, say, an enchantment or, or a world uh, empire buff. Uh, this is where it would appear, you'd get the name, who owns it, so it's uh, either me, my ally, or uh, one of the, our opponents, and the upkeep, upkeep, the mana cost per turn. So that is the overview panel complete, we'll now work on with diplomacy. Uh, pressing this button brings it up uh, on top of you as default, and when you select yourself, you get information related to you from the, the characters. So we are allied with Liana the Huntress, and we are at war with Groshak and Drugal. If you select our ally, Liana, it now flips. She, you see her status with everybody. Same with Groshak and Drugal. Um, in the top middle here, you can see some information about an empire. So Liana the Huntress, she's a high elf warlord, neutral. She, that's her alignment. And relation to us, she is allied, and she is polite. Same with these guys, yeah, they're probably polite too. But we are at war, and since we're at the start of the game, 
they are neutral they haven't done any evil actions yet and here you see alignment modifiers so if we commit some evil acts we'll you'll get text pop up here this option is for all your independent cities you can double click this and it will bring you back to the strategy map looking at an independent city you can do some communications you can also see that for all of the other players in the game too say we want to do some diplomacy it brings up this next screen you can ask you can offer stuff here you can ask for stuff on this screen so if this wasn't an allied game we'd have a couple of extra options here such as let's stop war have a peace treaty let's open our borders and here we talk about cities structures and heroes the cities is pretty obvious structures is in the form of watchtowers or um, forts and heroes if you if you want to give someone a hero I guess don't know why you do that um, lightning wand this is where all your items are uh, you send them over in the previous games that cost mana to do I don't think it costs mana in this game anymore and resources as far as I'm aware this doesn't work um, if you say you want to give you know 45 gold per turn you'll only get 45 gold taken off for that turn and then the next turn nothing comes off and that might change by release but it doesn't look like it is and um, it's not been mentioned much anyway um, that seems to be everything you can give uh, flat gold gold per turn I, sh I assume it will be fixed on release uh, flat mana or mana per turn and you can't give more than you currently own but you can give more gold than uh, than you bring in per turn so yes I guess it's done here oh yeah here's another thing okay so let's ask for 400 gold this button will auto balance the proposition so the computer seems to think uh, we can offer him 300 gold and 50 mana for his 400 gold it seems to be a win-win so I, I think I'll go ahead with that see what he'll do um, this is the Tome of Wonders this is quite an in-depth uh, manual for the game another youtuber called Bloody Battlebrain has covered this in slight detail already and he knows this stuff much better than I so I'll leave a description uh, or leave a link in the description box down below and you guys can check that out but basically you've got all these different tabs leading to different parts of the game it starts off with the basics so you get a rundown on uh, what the game is it starts off with how to use the tome or the manual and then it says what Age of Wonders is and then the leader, the heroes, the cities. So these are the core mechanics of the game. Next we go on to the overall mechanics. So you have the AI, you've got abilities in game, ability cooldown, and you can sort these. So you have the how to, how do I cast a spell? How do I build an army? And uh, the basics, so the ability cooldown is a basic. Um, units, um, abilities are on top of units, uh, army de desertion, that works with morale and you've got a lot more options you can also type in things so let's say a how to option is building an army and I'm sure that's not a diplomacy thing nope so if we type in army oh. uh, building an army should come back there it is so building an army game concepts cool the reason I didn't show that here is because these are all part of introductions there currently are no tips or quick start information in the basic section. Here is the skill section and if you remember in the first video you couldn't uh, get any of this information from the main menu but now you can uh, mess around galore. So avatar skills these are things that every single hero will get. Uh, a lot of these are similar for other as well. Um, things like Arachnid Horde. I'm pretty sure that is a um, Archdruid spell. I don't know why it's in other. Anyway, other combat spells. You can also sort this by sorcerer or um, alignment or specialization rather. Uh -huh. and we'll go over these in some more detail later. Uh, you can sort by tier, uh, the research cost for, for learning the skill, and then inside here. It pretty much gives you the same information that you get on the tooltip when you're in the uh, research screen and the spellbook. Um, 
but it looks a little bit better here. Let's move along. Unit abilities. So here you get all the unit abilities in the game. Quite a lot. Um, you can also sort them out so self only. For example, let me see. Crippled. Uh, once it's applied, it only affects that unit. Um, and you've got melee range, all the different range. There's only two extreme range abilities in the game. And all the passives. Uh, as absorbing pain is interesting. It's an active that then becomes a, a passive. And it's a really interesting ability. I've never really got it to work very well, but yeah. Um, all the unit affecting... Um, oh, all the actual units. Very good. So you can sort this by specific classes or other. These are the base units. So if you think you just want high elves, these are all the base high elf units, not counting class units at all. Um, other, other. You'll get units uh, summons. So you've got our elemental and a boar, which is just an animal. So it's right here with some sort of structure. Uh, your archons. Um, all this information is basically comes from the unit uh, description panel. Uh, I don't think it looks as good here. It looks very nice, um, but I prefer it on the unit in information panel. Uh, but this looks a lot better here. I think this looks terrible on the unit description panel. And I've been um, very vocal about my dislike of this uh, on the on that panel. It looks nice here though. It's streamlined. Very good. Um, so I'll not go into detail on all the different options because it's the same kind of system on all of these. So these are all the types of visitable locations on the map. So like Cartographer's Dent reveals a portion of the strategic map and it typically targets locations. For example, it won't just give you this is a road in the middle of nowhere. It'll say here's a uh, Dragon's Peak or whatever. You can also sort them by different types. So pickups, uh, in the Cartographer's Nest the flotsam, which is just a floating uh, chest of gold. Um, the final option is hero upgrades, and there are so many, so, so many. You get a lot of things that are duplicated, but not that many. Um, I think the only other real thing you can call duplicated is the uh, fire abilities, like fire musket, shoot, um, slime ball, or whatever. I've also got all your... Uh, Sorts, sorting lists, um, and then the level that you can use that ability at. Um, only the sorcerer and the uh, dreadnought get anything unique at level 13. Also, here we get a search, and this automatically brings up absolutely everything. Um, and you can see how fast that happens. It's practically instant. Um, so it's, it's a very fast and easily accessible um, huge database. Um, so we're on 12 minutes so far. I think we've got enough time to get through through the rest of this UI. But we'll start picking up the pace a wee bit though. So there are um, three resources in game. Uh, you can, I suppose you can break down the gameplay into three um, core core moments. So you've got the empire management where you sort out all your building, all your resources. Uh, you've got the strategic positioning give out its own separate stage because it's movement on the strategy map and then you've got the tactical map battles um, so you've got uh, gold uh, gold is used and as it says in the tooltip gold is used for building units and city upgrades but it's also used for hiring uh, heroes purchasing uh, towns and also buying units from locations such as inns and you can get them instantly um, on the tooltip you can see the base income, so you start off with a natural influx of gold. Uh, you, we are getting 18 gold from our city and minus 24 upkeep for our units. Also note that heroes don't cost upkeep and we'll show that off in a wee moment. Um, mana is used for casting spells, it's also used for the upkeep of spells. Um, and you get a base income of 10 and we've got 3 coming in from our city. Oh, and mana is also used for building specific, or training, I guess is a better term, training specific units, um, like class units and um, certain high tier units. Knowledge points are used solely for research and nothing else, and you start off with an immediate plus 20. 
and casting points are used for um, casting spells. Yeah. Um, let me see. Well, we'll go over here next. So event history is really interesting. So it's a really good way for keeping track of things. This is the current. This is a list of all the current uh, things you have to do or should take action with. But this gives you uh, all the actions that have taken place. So I sent a proposal to Drugal the Stout. It's, it's often interesting or uh, crucial to know, uh, especially if you've forgotten or if you're loading up a save. You can go into the event history and check that out. Here's the options and map settings. So if you want to activate the hex grid um, for a little bit more tactical positioning, I don't like it though. And um, show terrain income. So we set all resources. Then you can see them above all icons. I don't really think you need it. I mean, you can just click it and it'll say up above. Um, domain view. That's for the mini map. So you can see the domains or not, or whether you want to see them or not. So if we click back out of that, they'll disappear. Definitely want to keep that on. Uh, climb view. I guess that's climate, or maybe it's it's the height of mountains. Um, cities. That's looking at structures and locations and armies on the mini map. And here's the options. So you can surrender. Uh, well, let's just save the game, and I'll show you the surrender screen straight away. Uh, you always save over the video, old video test. That's good. So, uh, surrender brings you to the defeat screen. You got your banner on top of skulls now, and um, you can reload. You get all these like people being victorious and new pop-ups, but they're kind of pointless. And um, these statistics. So here, there's no. I don't think there is anyway. There's no way to go to like different hype levels. So we can't go underground or above ground. Um, you can see people's overall score. Now normally this is a bar chart, uh, or a line graph I guess is the, the correct ty type, but because it's turn 1, uh, no one really got anything. But this is what you'll see. You can either load game or go back to the menu. Let's just load back in now. Uh, I think I was just done with the top bar. We can start doing the bottom now. Um, yep. Continue our quest to power. Damn right we will. And we'll go through the events in a few moments. So the bottom left above your hero's portrait, again, just pan away, you click this, it'll take you to your leader. So you never really, it's really hard to get turned about, because there's so much to help you. Um, this top left icon is for your alignment. Um, so far we don't have anything, but this will visually change to show your alignment, so you don't need to mouse over it to really know what's going on. But it does include a list of everything that has affected your alignment and is currently affecting your alignment. So it's good, easy to keep uh, control. This brings up uh, diplomacy. And this is your uh, empire morale and the happiness. So far we are not happy because I sent all my money away. Whoops. Uh, oh well. Um, I don't think it will really make people that unhappy. No. Uh, but again, just like... Um, on the alignment, you get the list of everything affecting Empire Happiness. Um, the bottom, you get um, information about the game. So it's the current time. It's 20 to 5 in the morning. Should be asleep, whatever. Um, you get the name of your leader and the current turn that you're on. You get what you're researching. This we dash line is how many turns it's going to take. Let's cover this now. So here's the research. Top left is movement abilities, we've got sea faring after that I think it's basic logistics and then advanced logistics um, basically they're increasing your movement speed over certain types of terrain then you've got the two that are related to your class so sorcery is going to increase our casting points summon wisp is our uh, sorcerer spell casting chain, so we have wisp then apprentice, then Summon fantastical creatures and ma mana node, and then Eldritch Horror. Arcane Study is another one of our sorcerer abilities. Um, yeah, I'll not go through the spells. Um, I can do that in another video if anyone's interested, though. But let's see. What would we go for? What would we go for? Let's go for the scout. We're underground. Um, yeah, we'll go for the Wisp. Wisp's probably one of the better scouts. Um, she's very, very fast. Um, let me see. Okay, we'll move over here now. 
you got your toggles to go up and above ground this is well layer up and layer down so if we had more than just uh, surface and underground if we had all the depths we could go down to the depths of this button and uh, likewise up would take us to the lowest layer uh, yeah this is end turn button let's not press that yet this opens up your spell book here we can see what spells we have uh, if you look it's all in the same book so you go through it with different toggles so the this button brings you to the research and this button brings you to the global spells you can also check out your combat spells things that you can use in battle and these are your empire upgrades so we've got destruction node mana bonus and fire node mana bonus very cool um, but as you remember in when we set up the map we decided to have no spells it's more of an even playing field no randomization um, okay so a hero's offered to join us if you check that out, our upkeep is minus 12. Ah, oh, I can't afford them now. Damn. Oh well. Uh, basically, check out your upkeep. Hire a hero, then you'll notice that you can't... Uh, upkeep doesn't go down. Uh, right click, left click brings you to the event. Boom. Uh, we'll just close that for now. Right click uh, eliminates the event. Or, well, at the bottom you have the currently active or most pressing event. Uh, if you left click it'll bring you to it, right click will move it back in the queue and bring something else. Uh, above that you have everything that's going into the queue. So if we left click here it'll bring us to the event just like down here. But if we right click here it gets rid of it altogether. Uh, and we've already seen all these. If we press close it'll get rid of it or just right click. Select production. Well we can't really do a whole lot here. Okay, let, let's talk about this. We get 20 minutes in, so we've got maybe 10 minutes left. Um, if you want to just cycle, uh, produce merchandise without having to go into buildings and then scroll all the way down, you can just hit that and then that's you done. Yeah, that's a very nice, uh, quick way to do merchandise, uh, and that's what we're going to do because we've got zero gold, so we can't afford anything else. Uh, be really interesting to see if he accepts that offer. I don't think he'll have 400 gold turn 2 though. Um, okay. Let's see. Um, so, uh, who's this guy? Urkan the Hacker. Ooh, interesting. Yeah, he sounds like a bad guy. Um, and we are going to be nasty guys in this uh, video series. Um, so let's do... We've got 10 turns to mess about. Oh, let's talk about... I think I talked about this. Um, they bring you to the uh, diplomacy screen. But if you notice, there's these wee balls underneath. I haven't ended my turn yet, and as this is simultaneous mode, uh, we don't progress to the next turn until everyone has ended their turns, including all of the independents on the map. Um, when I end my turn, the ball goes uh, bluey white, light blue, um, and then we'll pro progress to the next turn. Um, but I want to do a little bit of scouting first. So when you start a game, uh, you typically, you're not really focused on taking over all the mines right around you straight away. You want to see everything around you. You want to get a good feel for uh, your local area. Um, you normally start off like this. You'll have one tier, higher tier scout unit. And because I choose weak, you've got just all tier ones and two irregulars. Um, and the regulars aren't great combat units at all. So we're at the very bottom of the map. Let's zoom out and check it out. Um, as you can see, this is the, the cloth map in the game. Really pioneered by, I think pioneered anyway, by Fallen Enchantress. i um, not sure if anyone else did it before though. Let me know in the comments below. Uh, be interesting to know. Here's our ally. Let's see what, what they're doing. So they've got a stack moving left. They managed to buy their hero, Varg the Bouncer. Um, so they've kept their stack and they've put in two swordsmen. Okay, that makes no sense. Uh, they're no good behind the wall. Um, well, I do things a little bit differently than the AI. So you can go this way. We don't really have anything below us. That's really good. Um, and I'll send you guys straight up. Eventually we'll want to take over these two stacks. Because our city, well our outpost, will expand to... In, to I guess include them. Um, so what I've just done here is I've just set the, the move path just so I know 
on my next turn. That's the order. That's the direction I'm going in. Um, yeah. An army requires my orders. So they've got a couple of move points left. Oh, they'll go down here. Okay. We'll go far right. Uh, so looking at the map, we chose average on our uh, distance from players. But this is quite a huge distance. Um, I guess we might a bit better. So you can assume the other two players will be here and here. That would be the most obvious points. But you also got to think we're underground. They could be here and here, or right on top of us. Um, so it's, it's quite interesting. We, it's, you would expect them to be in certain places, but you have absolutely no guarantee. Um, not with the average setting, anyway. Average is so, so good about average. And let me see, is there anything else we should think about covering on our first turn? We've got our resources. Um, we've talked about scouting being the most important thing for your first, let's say, uh, at least maybe 10 turns, uh, well, 5 turns scouting, and then between 5 and 10 you want to start taking over resource structures. Um, you can do it earlier if you're really short on money. Um, basically, this is a mana air node. When we first conquer it, we'll get um, a chunk of mana, maybe 40, uh, between 30 and 50 anyway. Same with a farm. As well, this is a great farm, and it'll give you gold. Um, it's practically a gold mine. No difference uh, in the amount that you bring in. Um, yeah, so I guess it's good to go, guys. I'm going to end the video here, and we'll pick this up in the next one, where we will start talking about some more advanced tactics on the uh, over map, and we'll see if we can get into a battle, and we can talk about all the different things you can do in battles. So thank you guys for taking part in this video. Uh, leave your comments down below if there's anything that you want to see in a little bit more detail. Um, and we'll, I'll see you guys in the next one.